Hey everybody, it's Rob with Landscapes Construction and Inspections by Rob. Ask Rob to be home savvy on YouTube. Hey, check us out there. Anyways, uh, here doing a quick renovation in a pool shed. If any of y'all wanted to know how easy it is to install a peel and stick carpet tile inside of an area, here is a quick how-to and things like that. I'll give you a quick rundown of the tools that we use, the basic prep to get this all set up, and some cool pictures to see how it comes out. Okay, so here's some of the tools that we use to install this peel and stick carpet tile, self-sticking style. We're using a 24 by 4, uh, 24 style selections, self-sticking eight millimeter thick carpet tile. Um, definitely gonna need a vacuum cleaner, um, a good clean wand, something that's gonna be good enough to suck up all the dirt and debris to make sure you have a good clean prepped up surface. Make sure you have a pair of pliers handy to pull any uh, staples or anything that are left over from carpet or whatever. And you also want to make sure that the surface is good and flat and somewhat smooth. We're putting ours on an old OSB floor, so it's plenty sticky to go ahead and go on that, but make sure it's completely clean and dirt free. Uh, you may want to mop it down if it has a bunch of uh, dust and stuff like that, just to make sure that your peel and stick stickies actually sticks to the floor. We use a good sturdy uh, straight edge for cutting the tile. Simple enough to have a, a good razor knife handy tape measure, and then you basically end up with some carpet scraps after you're all done installing. The back of the tiles come with arrows on the back of them to show the direction of your continued lay. So you always want to make sure that the arrows face in the same direction for continuity. As the tiles go down, if not, you will mismatch the pattern. Um, you could be kind of creative and do a checkerboard and go every other one facing one way and then every other one other one to make a checkerboard to go the other way. Kind of complex if you want to do it, but it makes a cool pattern and kind of give you an interesting uh, checkerboard style. Uh, I have done a couple of them like that. And like I said, you kind of get all the textures when you turn them in opposite directions. So that's why there's the arrows on the back to make sure you lay them in the correct direction. So they'll line up. If you don't, you'll end up with this strange fuzzied out pattern that is in the opposite direction. So if you want some change in the pattern so it looks like a checkerboard and you still kind of get that cool thing you have that option with that just make sure you constantly lay your arrows in the same direction every other pattern for your checkerboard anyways uh we're laying straight patterns for simplicity just to kind of throw it down get it done real quick uh it is as simple as you can find the straightest wall if you want to a lot of times it's better to lay the hot building out from the center we call it a crisscross in the middle find the exact center of the floor measure in all directions, find the center, strike out some nice square lines, make sure you've got a good square cross pattern in the very middle to start with, and then you can lay your tiles right down that. I've checked the shed, the shed's good and square, so we're just going right straight down the edge of it because we don't care where the pattern lays and ends. We've centered the tiles from the front to the back so that they cover out the door openings and things like that. So some details that you may want to think out when you go ahead and lay that floor pattern out on the floor. So you may want to just kind of lay a few tiles onto the floor and see what lays out the best for you to go ahead and install that. But let's get to it and we'll peel and stick and put some of these down and show you how well it is. And then we'll give you some after pictures to show you how the whole thing comes together. Keep watching. Okay, so here we are. We've Got our tile orientated, we're going towards the door with our arrows. I usually start in the point in the middle, tuck it in there, get it nice and flat, follow your edge, bring your other one together, make any minor adjustments to make sure it's good. Hold a little bit of tension on your tile to keep it square with the other ones. Work your way down and out, pulling back towards where you are working, and then you get a nice blended scene that disappears amongst the other tiles. So, here we go.
All right, guys, there we go. 10 by 10 shed done in about 45 minutes to an hour. Again, not something you have to rush to go through, but that just kind of shows you the uh, quick and ease of how fast this floor will actually go down. Have a few details that we want to go ahead and finish up. We're going to put a couple of nail down aluminum thresholds on each end of our floor for transitions as we change from the carpet to the next surface. Uh, those can be picked up, those are pretty easy to nail down. Something close to match the carpet works well or variants, whatever your choice may be. All we have left is a little bit of cleanup. Put the last couple details down and call it a day. All in all, little to no waste. Make sure you buy yourself a couple of extra tiles. Most likely you're gonna to have to buy a whole box at a time because they're not marked for individual sale. So check out what you have. At least you'll have some additional tiles. If you do ever end up having a spill or something that needs to be fixed or replaced on the carpet, very easy to find the square of the one that's damaged, peel that up, place another one back down in its place. Maybe a little bit of tinting from age, depending upon how old it is. But overall, I would give it a thumbs up and a pretty easy install. So. I wouldn't say it's a super beginner project, but it's definitely something that with some basic skills would be easy enough to go ahead and install yourself. If in doubt, you can always reach out and we will be glad to steer you in a direction, uh, provide a professional to go ahead and install or talk about something like that. Past that, enjoy. We're gonna enjoy our depression carpet. Got a little bit of cleanup and pickup to finish up, but check in with us again. Hope to see you soon.